Today, the FBI showed up at the home of Robert F. Hyde, just days after the House Intelligence Committee released text messages provided by indicted Giuliani associate Lev Parnas, in which Hyde appears to be representing himself as actively surveilling then-U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. Hyde was told NBC News he was drunk and unserious when he sent those texts. But the question you have to ask yourself is, how did someone like Robert Hyde gain access to the President of the United States? And the answer to that was laid out by Lev himself, who told Rachel Maddow how easy it is to get close to the president's inner circle. Just show up at the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. That's how Parnas himself met Robert Hyde. You met him where? I met him at the, I think at the Trump Hotel. Yes, the Trump Hotel. He was a regular at the bar. <laughs> because it was like a breeding ground at the Trump Hotel. So it, every event would be there, so everybody would hang out there afterwards. Everybody, all the meetings would be there. So it's basically, you would see the same people uh, every day, all the same congressmen that supported the president would be there, and nobody else. So he was a fixture on site. He was always there, and, but he was always drunk. What you gotta understand is uh, when we're in the Trump Hotel, it's like one big uh, cesspool, and there's really hard to keep any secrets. For more on that cesspool, I'm joined by independent journalist Zach Efferson, who spent the last two years staking out the Trump Hotel and writing up what he saw in the 1100 Pennsylvania newsletter and an article for Vanity Fair titled Power Tripping in the Swamp, How Trump's D.C. Hotel Swallowed Washington. Zach, this is your beat, probably more than it is anyone's beat. And I'm curious how Parnas's description squared with what you've been reporting over the last two years. Oh, it, it, it's spot on. I mean, Robert Hyde was on my radar as early as April. Um, you could look at his Instagram and there were pictures of him with the president. There were pictures of him with the vice president, all sorts of important people. And for him, it actually transcended the Trump Hotel. I think he was at six different Trump properties. But if you want to project importance, you can just go hang out at the hotel and take some pictures. One of the things um, that has struck me about this, where we are right now with the impeachment is usually it is very hard to get to the president of the United States. And, and, and that's for that. That can be really maddening for people when you're trying to if you're working in the in the staff of a White House and you want to get the president something on his agenda, it's hard to get to him. Um, this president seems remarkably easy to get to by all kinds of people with all kinds of agendas. And it seems like his properties are the nexus of this this kind of soft corruption. Oh, absolutely. I spoke to the president at the Trump Hotel. I was staying there researching one of my articles, and for the cost of a nice steak dinner, I was able to chat with the president, which you know makes for really good social media posts there. So if you just you know hang out there, take your pictures with your Kevin McCarthy's or Mike Pence's as they go back and forth. Now they're usually not up front in the bar; they're usually going back and forth from the entranceway to private rooms. But you see them coming and going. You can collect enough pictures, and you look like you're really important. And then what do you do with that really important? They'll look like you're really important. Well, I think with Robert Hyde, he was using it to run for Congress. And there are certainly some other people who are running for Congress, typically Republican challengers who seem to be collecting pictures of themselves at the Trump Hotel. But I've seen some people move kind of you know, from the lobby where the lesser swamp things hang out to the back rooms. And I, I, I don't know exactly what they're doing to get back there. But looking on social media, it almost looks like that they are puffing up their importance with a lot of pictures. And then all of a sudden they kind of get to be important. Huh, that's interesting. What, what do you mean by the back rooms? Describe it. Because at one point, uh, Parnas is talking about a private dinner with the president, which I think happens there uh, in the hotel, right. in like a back room. What, what is the, what's the sort of distinction between the, the, the lobby bar and like the back rooms where the actual important power players are? Sure. So there's really two tiers. If you go out in the lobby, that's where you're going to find not even Fox News hosts, but like Fox News guests are going to be hanging out there. People who really want to be seen and need to be seen to kind of project some sort of importance, but they may not actually be that important. You know, example, Corey Lewandowski is somebody you'll see it there. Rudy Giuliani was the exception to that. But it's the back rooms. It's the Trump townhouse, which is where Lev died with, uh, dined with the president. And it's the uh, Franklin study in the Lincoln Library where they have those private events. And that's where you'll see the mingling with special interest groups that have flown in, lobbyists, um, and you, anybody can see them coming back and forth, though, to the main entranceway, which is where some of these other interactions come from. And is that the well, final question here? Like, do like my understanding from the, the reporting we have and from the disclosures is that special interest groups, if you're trying to get a reg changed, if you're trying to get a piece of legislation like they know that's the place to go. And that's where those back room meetings happen. It can't hurt. There's absolutely no downside to, to booking the Trump Hotel. You know, I spoke to a lobbyist really early on when it was clear that, you know, this hotel was going to stick around. Said, you know, they're going to look. They're going to go there to try to influence them. And the response was, 
Of course they are. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Zach Efferson, uh, who has been covering this beat in his newsletter. Thanks a lot. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.